Hello, welcome back. So, um, I was going to use uh, the new architectural materials in Max, but frankly they make Max die, because I'm still using the last, the last official version before release. So I thought I would use just the standard arch and design, which means the people who aren't on a brand new version of Max can also use it. And also, so I don't have to download 3 gigs of new files, because I really can't be bothered at the moment. So, what I'm going to do is, first of all, turn these parts here the right way around because they ain't. So if I ungroup this, because if you remember last time it was grouped, so group, ungroup, and then select the parts I want flipped, so that's this bit and this bit. And if I flip them it'll look no different whatsoever, however if I hit F9 you'll see that you know it appears as a solid object, that means we're doing it the right way, okay? That's good, we like that. Okay, next, for our renderer, we want to set up using good old 3DS Max's uh, Mental Ray Renderer, like so. Now if I hit Render, just make sure it doesn't crash. There, it's all blown out and far too bright, but it's working, so that's cool. Now I'm going to stick a simple daylight system on this. So here's daylight. Just click Yes. Do that. Now, as you can see, the shadows are hitting the front a bit hard, so I'm going to bring this down in both hours and months. Too dark. There we go, about 8 o'clock in the morning, you see? Everyone's waking up, having their grapefruit, feeling fine. Okay, next. If I just hit render on this, there's our apartment, looking good. Just going to hit 8, change my environment to a slightly lighter colour, with maybe a hint of blue, like that. Okay, there. See, doesn't that look more friendly? Okay, now, what I'm going to do is just click here and show my safe frame. Then I'll know that I'm seeing all of my object when I hit the render button, rather than just a little bit of it. Okay, that just makes it easy for me to work on. And I'm going to get some materials together. So the first one is for the overall look of the building. So I'll go into the second slot, because what I'm going to do is just assign a plain Jane Grey to everything first. So now if I just hit render, you'll see there's our plain Jane Grey with some shadows. Lovely. So over here, under standard, I'm going to just pick an arc and arc, arch and design. I could also pick one of the other simple ones here, like stone if I wanted to, or something like that, or a nice wall paint. For example, here's a wall paint here, and we could use the colour. I mean, if we want a nice bright colour for our apartment, maybe a nice light eggshelly blue like that, you see? We can have them individual colours and then we could change the finish to, I don't know, flat matte seems okay, applied with a spray, there we go, and then just slap that on it there and stick some ambient occlusion onto it. Just assign it to my object. So now if I just hit F9, you see we've got this rather nice outside paint job going on there. Another option we could use is, if I just go over here, we could have uh, Autodesk Masonry CMU. Okay, uh, silly old thing. Hang on. So as we can see, 3ds Max at the minute isn't enjoying the CMU material. That's okay. So what other materials can we pop on this? Well, I quite like the paint. Um, what else have we got here? Well, Archer Design, plastic and vinyl. As long as we don't use anything too new, I think it's going to be okay. Hardwood, for example, probably out. <laughs> These will be fine for you, just not fine for me. So I'm just going to go into Arch and Design. And let's see. Hmm. Actually, no, I like that paint. Sod it. I'm going to go and have a paint. So let's find that paint. There we go. Change it to that nice kind of blue that I quite liked. About there. That'll do. Let's click and drag. Okay, and obviously that's been assigned to everything, just hit F9. There we go. That's rendering it out quite nicely. Now what I'm going to do is make a white paint. So this is our light blue paint. Now I want our white paint. So this is uh, white paint. And for that again, we're going to use a nice wall paint. And I'll use the white for this. And this is going to be a nice gloss and we'll enable the uh, I mean occlusion for both these things here for this one, this one will have been applied as a spray this one will have been applied as a brush 
gives a slightly denser looking paint. Now hit F4 because I'm going to want to just go around the front here and let's move this down here. Just use my select tool and I'm just going to select using a rectangle not a circle. And deselect the bits we don't want. That one, that one, that one. And all of these. Thank heavens for deselect. There we go. See, we can even marquee deselect them. Right, so we've got that selected there, so we'll apply our paint job to the front. Like that. Now we're going to go around the sides here. Now you can see this part here, if I just clip on it, looks a little bit inside out for my liking, so if I flip it it'll be okay. Then apply my white paint. This one's probably the same. And then down here we'll have our door, which is lovely and white. So I'll just assign our white paint to that as well. See how that looks so far. And I'm just going to quickly save this as my workbench. Okay, so we've got our white contrasting nicely with our not white. And we've got this nice kind of bluey colour going on here, if you like blue. Could change it to an even lighter blue if I so decide. Now, materials. We want an arch design plastic. White. And for our plastic white, it's going to be an arch design again go down to a nice glossy plastic, change the colour here to sharp white, because utilities are always sharp white. Select both these pieces here and do that. Now over here where this door is, we're going to need some uh, metals. So over here I'm going to choose an arch design again, and this one's going to be some sort of a metal, maybe a brushed metal change the colour on it, uh, maybe a nice red. Red always goes well, just lighten up a little bit. And over here I'm going to make a plain metal. We could also use Autodesk Metal if we want to. Uh, let me see, Autodesk Semi-Polished, there we go. So now we've got two different kinds of metal here, again save our workbench just in case Max decides to throw a hissy wobbly fit. Grab here and just grow it and then I'm just going to assign this coloured material to it to see if that's going to crash Max by hitting F9. Nope, seems okay. It's very reflective isn't it? My goodness. Quite nice though. And then this one's going to go over to here and here, and even here. I think the kind of piece of uh, metal going across there makes it look like quite a nice big secure door actually, which is quite nice. Okay, next. These fellows here, if we just go to perhaps, uh, I don't know, an arch design. Just want something nice and soft for it. Not a matte plastic or water. Uh, let's have a look. What have we got here? Just something simple. Here we are, glossy varnished wood. And then just hit them on here, here, and here. And just click show end result. And hit F9. So there we go. You see we've got some nice contrasting colours going on. And up here where that metal box is. If I just pull this over to here. Okay, and that's coloured in the apartment nicely, you see, so all the individual parts now are there, various different colours. What we could do as well, if you want, is we can put a light up here just to show that that's what this is. So for example, let's see, 
We could do a photometric free light just here. I mean, it all depends really on, you know, what kind of level of detail you want to go for. But there we go. But that will give us the reflection off the roof for this so that clients will know that it's a light and not just an ornamental flower box. Because you want to give people as many visual clues as you possibly can. And what we can do is just, you know, turn up the luminosity on this a lot. Like that. Okay, so we get that nice thing there and turn on some shadow mapping. And now it's generating its own light from there. So if we just workbench save, hit F9. There you go, you see, so we have that light coming up now out of that, throwing its own shadows, which is quite pleasant. Okay, so now we've built what this is going to look like, we can start stacking these damn things up. So, I don't want to stack the actual daylight system up. So I'm going to move that out the way over here, it doesn't really matter where it is, because it's global. So now I can re-grab these, go into a group, and for this group these will be apartments, that's apartment one. Now, depending on how you want to do this, we can either have the apartments um, in the four block that I showed before, or we can have them in the two block. Um, I think I'm going to have them in the four block because this makes more sense, because this is how they're going to be presented anyway. So I'm just going to mirror these and copy. It takes a moment or two just for 3ds Max to calculate its realistic shader. Just hit F4 so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Next, drop back into perspective and zoom. And what I'm going to do here now is grab that and that and just do a mirror again. Wait patiently on the Z axis. Sorry, Y axis. Uh, pull this over here. Okay, and I'm going to keep these slightly apart whilst I work in just our lift, obviously for bringing things up and down to the various apartments, and then our stair unit, which is going to allow people to walk up and down to different levels, which is quite important. So, what we're going to do for that is have the lift with the stairs going around the lift, alright? Which makes things a little bit easier. We could also, you know, if this is Europe, put in disabled ramps, unless we're in the Netherlands, because they don't mess around with that kind of thing over there, or whatever. So, I'm going to look up a lift dimension and some stairs in the next set, and we'll get building.